Pakistan's top military generals have decided this evening they will go ahead with the execution of Kulbhushan Jadav despite India's stern warning that his hanging will have serious consequences on bilateral relations. This has been communicated through a statement put out by the Inter-Services Public Relations team. This decision apparently taken at a high-level meeting of co-commanders presided over by Pakistan Army Chief Kamar Bajwa in the general headquarters of Rawalpindi. I want to go across live and exclusive to Washington DC. Joining us from there, the former President of Pakistan, former Chief of Army Staff, General Parvez Musharraf, a man who understands the thinking within the Pakistani Army more than anyone else. General Musharraf, welcome. I want to begin by quoting to you what Dr. S. Jai Shankar, India's Foreign Secretary, has said. He says the proceedings that have led to the sentence against Jadav are farcical in the absence of any credible evidence against him. It is significant mm. that our High Commission was not even informed that Jadav was being brought to trial. If this sentence against an Indian citizen is carried out, the government and the people of India will consider this a case of premeditated murder. Why General Musharraf is Pakistan acting in a case which will be regarded in India as premeditated murder, sir? No, I don't. I disagree with that view totally. I mean, first of all, uh, what is this idea? What is the logic behind Pakistan should be informing India that we are putting him on trial? I mean, the man has carried out sabotage and espionage activities against Pakistan and he has to, he's being tried. So why should India be informed about I it? I will tell you, uh, General Musharraf, why India should be and informed then after that, is because now, Pakistan, Pakistan, sir, is a signatory to the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations, 1963. I want to read out to you, sir, some of the articles, 31, 36, 1C of the Vienna Convention. I read it out to you, sir. Under this, ob the receiving state, which is Pakistan in this case, is obligated to facilitate A. Promptly inform the competent consulate when one of their nationals is arrested or detained. Inform the detained foreign national of his right to consular access within his home state. C. Facilitate the protection work performed by the competent consuls in the form of visits, communication and legal arrangements made for the detainee. Pakistan, General Musharraf, is a signatory to this international treaty and this is the bare minimum that Pakistan would be expected to do. Now, let, let's not bluff each other. These international conventions are there and I know they are always violated. Take the United Nations resolution in 1948 on Kashmir. Is India accepting that resolution? You're violating a United Nations Security Council resolution. So what are we talking? These conventions are there and these rules, regulations, these are good ways of uh, blaming each other. We know that both of us have been violating these. Sir, and we e follow our own General laws. Musharraf, at we the are following peak, Pakistan at the laws. Peak of and that is what they are doing the Cold and there is no War, need of information. The Soviet Union and the United States followed basic diplomatic protocol with each other. Here, 14 times India has asked for consular access. 14 times that consular access has been denied. Pakistan acting like a rogue state, not following any international protocols, General Musharraf. No, no, no. I think there's many times that you, you have been uh, now violating all these conventions. Pakistan is not a rogue state at all. I think India is a rogue state. If you start calling Pakistan, I would very much like to say that you are the rogue state with whatever is happening today in the environment between India and Pakistan. It is India responsible, your Prime Minister responsible, your Defence Minister responsible, your Army Chief responsible. So let's not increase so, the tension. Here's the situation and let the legal process in Pakistan take, take its course. <laughs> And stop quoting these international regulations. I'm not an expert on reading all these books of Geneva Convention, para number 8, 283 and all that. I don't know. Uh, but however, we follow our laws. And so have you been following your laws? And uh, well, there's all, whenever there's tension between India and Pakistan, now you are going on to compare India-Pakistan relations, what Russia and America did. I mean, let's stop this. Let's talk about ourselves. And let's talk realities so on the ground. So let's talk reality. Let's talk 
let's leave rhetoric aside let's focus on facts let's look at what happened with ajmal kasab he was caught in the middle of a terrorist act with a gun on his shoulders firing at indian policemen despite that he was given a full opportunity to defend himself there was a public civil trial that was carried out he had every right to appeal consular access was offered and granted and look at what pakistan's done you've picked up somebody from iran brought him by buying him from the taliban into pakistan denied consular access and suddenly want to hang him what's the difference between what the taliban does and what pakistan is doing general musharraf first of all basic statement i mean uh, i see i am watching the indian television and you are repeating the same thing that catching him from iran let's stop bluffing this why are you distorting these realities he was caught in baluchistan nobody has been picked up from iran stop this game stop telling lies to the people and stop creating hysteria within your country in the public by telling them lies pakistan got him in baluchistan and he has admitted to the fact that he was carrying out dozens of sabotage activities in baluchistan and karachi Gen now he's admitted to all this Gen and this is this is the fact now if this be the fact we are following certain laws of our own in our case whenever a person is caught for espionage and sabotage he can be court martialed and when you court martial a person you follow the manual of milit pakistan military law and may may i say that this is a copy of whatever the british military law has been and i'm very sure that your indian military law is also similar to the mpml that we call it no. now we are oh. following that military law and tried him now he has uh, he has right to appeal there can be an appellate bench he can, he has a right to appeal in the supreme court that he can do and then he can he has a right to ask for mercy let the legal process take place you did that with ajmal kasab yes he went to supreme court it took some time let time pass here the first court uh, orders uh, passes the death sentence and you are creating such a hysteria a war hysteria which is so dangerous so what dangerous Pakistan locally did, for between General us and for the world general musharraf is dangerous you are saying yeah, let's not listen powers, let to indian leaders let me quote to you what the highly respected very knowledgeable german ambassador to pakistan dr ganta mulak said he says the indian recently picked up was actually caught by the taliban in iran and sold to pakistan intelligence and he is basing this on german intelligence reports which he had access to so forget what the pakistanis are saying let's for a moment leave aside what the indians are saying look at what third parties international respected third parties are saying they're also accepting the fact that here is an indian businessman picked up in iran by the taliban sold to pakistani intelligence that's how you got indian businessman kulbushan jadav <laughs> now again again rahul you continue telling lies so this indian is indian businessman gunta mulak he is a german What ambassador are you talking? to pakistan he's a naval commander his name is known his name service is known his, everything is known about him so stop it i think this doesn't i mean we can't proceed like this i mean when you are not even believing that this man was a commander of the uh, no, of no, the of indian navy no no of course navy. he's a commander of the he indian navy he is he's a retired commander of the indian and navy you're talking of some the german no, military no, no, attache and all that why not he's not a military attache general musharraf he is the german ambassador no, no, to pakistan dr gunta malak he's not serving i know officers who served with him on the ship he, is, he used no, to be no, an indian are, navy officer are, he's retired that also a decade and a half ago he's not retired yesterday he's retired a long while back he had a business in iran which he was running no he didn't retire he went uh, he went into raw he joined your intelligence agency and that is how when he was in uh, chabahar that is the ideal place for intruding and carrying mischief into baluchistan ideally located right therefore he was placed there and it was there from from there that he was collecting people who were dissidents and those who were uh, no. uh, terrorists in pakistan those who were for separatism in baluchistan picking them up sending them for training to india and training them also and arming them financing them pumping them back into pakistan and then giving them targeting a uh, uh, targeting policy which all this was being done by him from chabar 
and then he happens to come into Baluchistan. He's bold enough to come cross into Pakistan. And, General uh, Musharraf, you are a past master at spy so games. You are saying that you are the man, man who now, orchestrated and mastermind the Kargil operation, which boomeranged on your nation. You know well that if this is an actual spy and if he's truly in Baluchistan, he would not be carrying an Indian passport with him. General Musharraf, you are a past master at these spy games. No real spy goes around with a genuine Indian passport into Pakistan. It simply doesn't work that way. I'm not a past master on spy games. I mean, you're com talking of Kargil. That was not a spy game going on. It was a very, very open military action, right? And we did something which you will remember. India will, Indian Army will remember all their lives. So don't say that whatever happened there, we know what happened, we know what Indian Army suffered. So let's not compare that and I'm not a spy master at all. I don't believe in that. I, I've never served as a spy, uh, spy master. But however, the, here is a case, I don't know, it is being taken to such extent, it is being taken to such levels uh, that you are, as usual, whenever anything happens, you can carry to a level of hysteria within your public. And that is so terrible because that brings enmity between the people of the two countries. This is what you always do. This is what India always does, unfortunately. Sir, no, no, no. And because let's, again. let's stick and to facts, again General Musharraf. And the blame on Pakistan I, I have by telling your... these lies no, sir. of his being a businessman and he's caught in Iran. No, sir. Where is the evidence against Kulbush and Jadav? Give me one shred of evidence. I challenge you, General Musharraf provide an iota of evidence to suggest he was involved in terrorism. The only <laughs> evidence so Listen, far is a supposed edited videotape. General it, Musharraf, there's an edited videotape which has been put out a supposed confession. Now you know well that if any person, the video journalist filming this interview with you in Washington DC, if he were to pick, be picked up, if I were to be picked up, if you were to be picked up, anybody by a rival intelligence, by an enemy intelligence agency, I can be made to confess that I killed John F. Kennedy even if I wasn't born there. So a confession in duress in the custody of an agency like the ISI means nothing. There has to be substantive evidence and so far Pakistan has presented not an iota of evidence against Kulbush and Jadav. No, no, as far as I'm concerned, sitting here in Washington, I certainly don't know what is the evidence available. I am very sure evidence must be available with the ISI. They may have not have shared it with you, but I'm sure they'll share it in the future. They must be having. The other point, when you say doctoring of evidence, now you, you spoke of Ajmal Kasab, isn't it? Why, why don't you believe that it was all doctored? Uh, why do, should I not believe that this Sir, Ajmal he Kasab was statement caught in the middle LED of the Mumbai being terror attack, being, being masterminded by handlers sitting in K Karachi. And he was caught with a gun. He was killing our no, police no, that officers. Is correct. People that is died. Correct. But you this know, was, a lot of this was caught on camera and on CCTV cameras across Mumbai when masterminds sitting in your country, General Musharraf, perpetrated the okay. Mumbai attacks for which okay, your government Rahul, has accepted responsibility, Rahul, sir. Let me. Uh, I am. Rahul, let me do the talking more than you. I am being interviewed, isn't it? So let's cut short your question. I'll keep answering. Now, when you're talking of uh, Ajmal Kasab and doctoring, I'm talking of his statement that LET was used, was being used, or Hafiz Said was, uh, was involved in it. That is all doctored. That has been doctored. And he was one individual. And here is an individual who has been launching dozens of Ajmal Kasabs into Pakistan and killing hundreds of people. So this one is more serious than what Ajmal Kasab that you keep, that you keep quoting. Should I think, and when you talk of doctoring this, the doctoring can be done with Admiral Kasab also. I mean, this is what was done, unfortunately. Uh, there's a big difference. Let's leave his confession on the side. There is technical evidence, GPS coordinates, tracing all the calls coming out of Pakistan. The handlers were sitting in Karachi. Not just Indian intelligence, but Israeli and American intelligence also confirmed that every single call being made by the handlers traceable through technically solid GPS data. Though all those calls were traced back to Pakistan, that's a fact you can't deny. That's what I'm saying. Where is the corroborative evidence? Leave this confession aside. You know that I can be made to confess that I killed John F. Kennedy. So can you if you're caught by an agency which is hostile to your nation. Leave that aside. Where is the real, credible, documentary, yes. technical evidence, General Musharraf? Yeah. One shred of it. 
I challenge you. Or Pakistan or ISI. No, no, all that can be, all, all of it can be doctored. All this, all these statements, all his statements, all his uh, talking to anyone can all be doctored. That is what exactly is doctored. And it can be done by intelligence agencies and that is what Roy has been doing with Admal Kassab. Uh, and that is what that about is the also, American intelligence? Uh, we, we don't believe it. American intelligence we don't also doctored this. Has okay, let's like leave like Admal Kassab on the side. What, what about uh, American Kassab? intelligence? What about Israeli intelligence, which all accepted that those calls were being made by handlers sitting in Karachi? Now I don't, I don't know what, what Israeli intelligence was saying. I really don't know about it. General Musharraf, now Pakistan seems to be whipping itself into a bit of a hysteria, suggesting that India has kidnapped a certain Lieutenant Colonel Muhammad Habib Zahir who apparently went missing uh, in Lumbini, very close to the India-Nepal border. We saw the Pak Foreign Office come out and say that this ISI officer has been kidnapped by India. Now, India hasn't said that any such officer is in their custody. Pakistan, however, seems to be building a frenzy. His son has gone to a Rawalpindi police station, filed an FIR, where there is this most fantastic mm. plot that he was drawn from Pakistan to Lumbini in Nepal, where there was supposed to be some kind of information being given to him, a job was promised to him. You know, it almost seems as if people sitting in Pakistan are, uh, you know, are wanting to be the next John Grisham writing all these uh, fantasy novels. No. Uh, first of all, again, you are distorting. I don't think they, anyone is saying that he was an ISI officer. This was a retired military officer. And on his own, he has gone to Nepal. That is what is being said. And he's missing. Now, we don't know. Nobody is saying where he is. We don't know where he is. So let's not cook up more details into it. Let's not bring in ISI, because that also shows ill intention that later on you are going to say that here is an intelligence officer of Pakistan who we, who we got hold of, and he's saying this and that. No, and again. you are going to doctor his talks also. So I've got so a statement here aside. from the that, spokesperson. That of Pakistan's foreign we, office. Let, let's leave it. This is sent to us, General Musharraf, by our correspondent in Rawalpindi. It says, we are in touch with the government of Nepal over the mysterious disappearance of a retired colonel of the Pakistani army. There are doubts that a secret agency of an enemy country is behind his kidnapping. This is the Pakistan foreign office. Now, there is no evidence to back any such thing happened. And yet you've got Pakistan trying to make it seem as if it's a tit-for-tat no, situation. they said that he's an ISI officer? No, they haven't said that. They've said it's no, a... No, hold on, No, no, why would you hold accept on, he's Raul. an ISI officer, General Musharraf? Hold Mushara? on, have they said... No, they haven't. You, whatever they, you've read, where is it that there's an ISI officer? You said, you said he was an ISI officer. So why did you say that? No, I'll tell no, you why... Whatever I, you've read... No, no, one second, I'll tell you, General Musharraf, I'll tell you why I said it. Because I can show you reports from Dawn in Pakistan, highly respected Pakistani newspaper, Geo TV, I can show you from Park Tribune, all of them saying that here is an officer who used to be with the ISI. They're accepting that. Your own media, General Musharraf, is reporting this. I'm just quoting verbatim what your media is saying. Do you believe your media or do you think they're making it up as well? Well, a lot of things, a lot of things uh, the media doesn't know. What I'm quoting is the ISPR report and I know, I know for fact, on my own sources, that this is a retired officer and nothing to do with ISI. No, so is Pakistan hoping for a Cold War style exchange where you're hoping that, you know, is that the reason why this particular gentleman, uh, Kulbushan Jadav has been sentenced because you're hoping there can be a prisoner swap? Is that really Pakistan's big game here? Well, that can be your big game. How is it Pakistan's big game? If this colonel is missing, it, and you have picked him up, you can go for this game of swapping over with that no, no, colonel with Gulbashan Yadav. Why would Pakistan go in for this swap over? Nature, you know, you we don't, we don't up, have, have, we don't I have any ridiculous. such... So, the message from India is very clear. You know, I, we, we interviewed India's Home Minister Rajnath Singh. He said, India will do what it takes what it takes to bring Kulbhushan Jadav back to safety. That's a very clear message. Last time you messed with us in Uri, we came across the border, we carried out surgical strikes. The government in India, led by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, sending out a very stern message. India will do what it takes, General Musharraf.
to bring Kulbushan Jadav back. And we, Pakistan, will take what it takes to counter whatever you do. Do you want that? And that is exactly how war starts. You want to go to war? You want to initiate no, it's, it's a war? The provocation the came countries? from Pakistan. Now, this is the Without most irresponsible an open trial, with, you've with sentenced someone. Hold, hold on, when so, I'm talking, please don't interfere. Sure, go on. Don't interfere when I'm talking. I'm not listening to you. Don't talk when I'm talking. Don't, don't speak when I'm talking. I'm saying that whatever your defense minister has stated as a government position, that whatever it takes, they are going to do that. Now, this is a clear threat. And any, any respectable country, any country which wants to have its honor and dignity in it, within itself, it will react. Now, you, you dare us to do something. We will then dare you to do. Now, you are telling us that you are going to counter us with whatever it takes. Well, what should Pakistan do? You, we buckle? We will not buckle. This is, you are facing a country which has uh, an army which is battle-hardened all along, the whole army. So we carried out so surgical strikes on army. Pakistani soil. The Pakistani army wasn't to able to do very much, General Musharraf. Never, it never happened. It's all cooked up. It is all cooked up. Rahul, I know this. This is what you do. What surgical strikes? You didn't do anything. It is just to pacify your public that your government, since it had been threatening Pakistan, whether we are going to do this and that, that they cooked up this uh, cock and bull story of a surgical strike in Pakistan. Actually, they didn't do anything. They shelled, they fired artillery shells and mortar shells. That is all that they did. General, Nothing more General than Musharraf, that. you talk of honor and dignity. The whole public, including yourself, I, that I, they want. I will tell you what honor and dignity is. Surgical sir. strikes. Well, I've got over here. That. I've got over here a list of 27 Pakistani prisoners arrested under the Official Secrets Act in India. 27 Pakistani sold, uh, people charged with espionage. Each one of them, each one of them, Sajjad Haider. Uh, at the rate, uh, alias Muhammad Parvez, son of Muhammad Ali Haider. Uh, he's in Tihar. When was he arrested? 2010 in Delhi. FIR number 43, stroke 2010. Uh, I've got the charges. I've got okay, whether the sentence has been completed. Oh, 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 one now second, one second. I will, I will not read those 21 names. The point I wish to make, General Musharraf, is that every single Pakistani prisoner arrested by India has been offered consular access. Your High Commission officials have gone and met them. This is honor and dignity, General Musharraf. This is basic human decency, which Pakistan did not show towards Kulbushan Jadav. Well, that is different. There is no honor and dignity in that. There are certain laws that may, they, are, they may have followed. I am not privy to that. Why they didn't give consular access, I am not sure of that. No, that's very so I convenient. I would be able to comment on that. Well, that's very convenient, General Musharraf. What, what you, what, what you like, you are commenting on. What you are not able to comment on, you are saying I have no idea why they didn't do it. Second. I am talking of, I am talking of. Again, you are talking when I am talking. I am talking of honor and dignity. When you threaten me, if anyone threatens me that I am going to come and hit you, what should I do? If I, I have any honor and dignity, I'm going to say, come and, come and try it. Come and try it and let me show you what I can do to you. So don't do this. Don't give these threats to an army which is very, very strong. Don't give a threat to a, in a situation where both the powers are nuclear. Don't do this because we can damage each other a lot. So this kind of hysteria, this kind of offensive talk, you should be able to... No, but you the provocations come Bhutan, from Pakistan. Pakistan. Bhutan is our friend. We won't take it. Bhutan is our it. friend in the neighborhood. We don't need to threaten no, no, them. No Those who provoke us, no they are the ones we must come down on, General Musharraf. We have no enmity with Bhutan. <laughs> we are friends. Well, don't try to come down. Now, don't use such words. Stop telling us that we need to come down on. You dare not come down on, on Pakistan, okay? You dare not do that. General, I dare your army to do that. General Musharraf, you saw what we did in... Bangladesh, when we came down to doing it, you mess with F enough, and then we've shown in the past, not once, we showed in Kargil what we are capable of, where your army had to run away. Why are you challenging us? Why are you provoking us? Why are you upping the ante? Yeah. Why is we Pakistan you, escalating? We showed you in Kargil. So we you had to run away, Kargil, sir, from okay? the hills, from the mountains of Kargil. Have you, have I was there as a reporter. 
We went to Tolo Ling. We saw oh, how the Pakistani three. army had to flee from there, sir. Your army had to flee from there. That's a fact. Okay. Stop. Okay. Stop talking nonsense. Have you said? Uh, have you read Barkhad Dutt's book? Do you know where your two em an emissary was sent to President Bill Clinton to ask Pakistan to withdraw from the heights of Kargil? Do you know that that didn't happen after a week or so? Then the, another emissary was sent, and President Bill Clinton happened to be in Geneva. Then the emissary went to Geneva to ask him to tell, pa persuade Pakistan to withdraw. Do you know this? Read Barkhad. General Musharraf, I don't verbal. care very much not for what mine, somebody may Pakistani. have written. I know this for a fact. I've read, I've read, and I've pressure. seen so from Kargil, from Mashko, from Dras, from Batalik, from the heights of Tiger Hill, from the heights of Tololing, the Pakistani army was chased away. That is an undisputable fact. But that's not what I'm talking about right now, General Musharraf. If you were Pakistani you know that that army is... chief at this time, if you were okay, president of Pakistan, would you have? Had the honour, the dignity, and the decency of offering consular access to Kulbushan Jadav? Do you believe, as a responsible nation, you say Pakistan is not a rogue state? That is the very least that Pakistan should have done, General Musharraf. I don't know. I would have, uh, I would have analysed the realities and the laws and the rules of Pakistan and taken action then. I really, I am not privy. I don't. I haven't studied that. Why they didn't give counsel direct access? But you find I'm it not odd. Sure. You find it odd. And uh, therefore, I won't comment on it. You find it odd. The basic counsel acts, and no, the very no, least, the right to defence. I don't find it odd. I'm, I'm very sure that. Uh, no, I don't find it odd at all. Take an action according to the law of the land. General Musharraf, I'm going to leave it there. You've had a say. We've asked the questions that needed to be asked. We leave it to our viewers to decide. But make no mistake, the government of India is very clear. And that message comes from every single citizen watching this broadcast. India committed to doing what it takes to get Kulbush and Jadav back. I know your interviews are tracked after we do them in Pakistan as well. Highest and authorities have, watch them. And Let them have, know from an Indian citizen this evening. And we you will get seen, Kulbush and Jadav. General and you have, seen, you, you have seen the army general's response. You have seen the Pakistan army general's response also. That we will do it and let us see what you do. I've got breaking news coming in now on the newsroom that the United States has just announced that it's dropped the biggest non-nuclear bomb, 21,600 pounds. It's called the mother of all bombs. Joining us in here today is Strategic Affairs Editor Gaurav Savan. 21,000 pounds in Afghanistan. What's going on, Gaurav? So this is in the Nangarhar province, Rahul. 21,600 pounds. This is the biggest bomb ever non-nuclear it is a smart bomb it is a gps fitted bomb uh, this was dropped on board uh, an mc-130 a c-130 hercules so when you say mc-130 it's a marine corps aircraft so it's a special operations uh, device that was uh, that was used 21,600 tons, uh, pounds of TNT dropped in the Nangarhar province. Now, apparently, Rahul, this is one area that has a massive network of tunnels uh, which the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda exploit. Uh, the moment there is pressure, they run away from that area. And to destroy that entire uh, tunnel network in one area, they've used this 21,600 pound non-nuclear TNT explosive device. Shivarur is joining us. Loves weapons, gadgets, 21,000 pounds of a bomb coming down in Afghanistan. What triggered this shift and explain the technology? This is the largest non-nuclear bomb tested only once but never used in any kind of action before this. It was actually uh, developed uh, and tested for the first time during the uh, Iraq war, uh, uh, Rahul. Uh, and it is actually uh, many more times more powerful than many uh, nuclear warheads as well. So, you know, to say that it is uh, the most powerful non-nuclear weapon is a bit of a misnomer because it's actually more powerful than many nuclear weapons. Uh, that's point number one. Point number two, uh, it's a precision guided weapon. It was dropped from an MC-130, very much like the C-130Js that the Indian Air 
Air Force uh, already operates. Uh, this is an air, uh, this is a this is a, a, a missile a bomb that looks very much like a cruise missile. It basically would have glided to its target, penetrated uh, you know many feet into the earth. Uh, you know, into that tunnel system in the Nangarhar pro province, the Achin area of Afghanistan, and then exploded upward uh, with with unimaginable intensity, you know, many hundreds of tons of TNT worth of explosive uh, uh, power packed into that one, uh, you know, one bomb. And that's the reason why uh, it's called the mother of all bombs, or as Russia sometimes referred to it, the father of all bombs, extremely powerful. It's never of all been used bombs, Father of all bombs. I want to understand, uh, you know, why would they use such heavy weaponry? There's no war going on. It's not like the Iraq war is currently on, Gaurav. Why would they use such heavy weapons? 21,000 pounds, that's the bomb that you're dropping. What were they going after? And do you need such heavy weapons to go after the, whatever they were going after in Afghanistan? So, uh, very sketchy details just as yet. But what the American media is reporting is that there was a network of tunnels uh, that was being exploited uh, by the Al-Qaeda morphed, uh, you know, now as Islamic State. So, do you State, need something bigger Taliban. than a nuclear bomb to go after that? Uh, so, you destroy the entire, it, it, has a, it has an impact area of more than 300 meters. So, between 300 meters to 500 meters. So, that's practically half a kilometer area. Area, you've destroyed everything in that area and that was the aim of this explosion more details are expected just in a short while from now Rahul okay I'm gonna leave it there and this is also happening at a time when Donald uh, Trump uh, the president of the United States did an interview where he seemed to recall entirely what he ate for dessert the previous night when he was speaking he ends up saying that we bombed Iraq, Iraq and then says no no sorry we bombed Syria so this, that's the kind of person who's taking these decisions serious you know, it's it's completely crazy. The fact that you know he's speaking and he's saying that uh, this is uh, a bomb on Iraq, and then suddenly he slips back and says, "No, no, actually, we bombed." So, and it's it's Syria. actually the anchor, the interviewer, who, who corrects him and says it's Syria. He so he describes the chocolate cake better than he describes he describes the chocolate cake better than he describes uh, you know the country that he's just targeted. That's absolutely crazy. There will be a White House briefing soon. We will be tracking the story very closely. Okay, I want to now shift our attention to the other big story we're tracking, electronic voting machines and the big EC hackathon. The election commission announcing that there will be a hackathon in the first week of May where uh, all hackers will be invited to show up made them hey, can they hack into these machines or is this just a case of the opposition acting like sore losers? Here's the story. <laughs> The electronic voting machine, the technology that runs the world's biggest elections, is itself facing a no-trust vote. After relentless attacks by the opposition, the Election Commission has thrown an open challenge. Hack the EVMs and prove your point. Then the Supreme Court also stepped in, putting the government in the dock. Hearing the Bahujan Samaj Party's petition, the Apex Court sought a reply from the EC and Centre on EVMs operating without voter verifiable paper trails. Where the Supreme Court in 2013 held the paper trail to be indispensable, after three years, four years, we have a sorry and sad state of affairs where the government has not released funds to buy the VVPAT paper trail machines. And we told the court that it would take almost 150 years before you had paper trail and thereby you would be denying the Supreme Court requirement of transparency. This is fundamental because basic structure of the constitution puts free and fair elections at that level. Meanwhile, opposition parties are now questioning whether the poll watchdog is actually throwing out a challenge. As the war of words continued, the Uttar Pradesh Election Commission initiated a fresh flashpoint seeking EVMs manufactured after 2006 for local body polls, claiming it will use paper ballots if the machines are unavailable. For now, all eyes are on the EC to see when it officially announces its challenge and puts the onus on the opposition to prove its claim that Indian democracy is under threat. With Supriya Bharadwaj in Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today.
क्या आप में दम है कैन सम वन हैक इन टू द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक वोटिंग मशीन और इज अरविंद केजरीवाल एंड अदर्स इन दोजिशन गुड हैव अड ऑफ एग ऑन दर फेस वॉन्स दिस हैकथन एंड ऑन द ब्रॉडकास्ट अरविंद झा He is a hacker. He claims he can get into the EVMs. That's why Kureshi Ashish Kaitan and Sudhan Chutravedi. I want to go to Arvind Jha first, because you're amongst those who've accepted Nasim Zaidi's challenge, saying you can, you think, hack into electronic voting machines. Just how, Arvind, do you intend to do this? Yeah, thanks, Rahul. Uh, I think it's more like testing what's happening with these EVMs, rather than really trying to hack into them within 10 days. My interest got piqued because uh, the Minister for IT in Karnataka, Priyank Kharge. Actually, I invited the EC to do a public hackathon, and when I saw that the EVMs were failing in a consistent manner, one type of result was coming out all the while. Given our training, I figured out that either there is a default path that the system defaults to, or there is some bug, or maybe even a trojan that fails in a particular way. Any time any system fails in a particular way, every time, then given enough testing, you can either reproduce that failure. or find the cause of that failure if we can collectively do that then hopefully we'll have helped the indian ec as well as the indian democratic setup make voting more secure that's my interest can we create a set of test scripts test plans and actually test out all the possible scenarios all the possible hardware circuits all the possible software circuits and figure out a way that the evm goes into this buggy state where it's starting to print one particular bias if we can demonstrate that this can happen then clearly this systems are not safe dr kureshi does that answer your question dr kureshi we've just seen uh, arvin ja explain his strategy But there I, are uh, many I'm other sure. hackers who are wanting to jump in give this a shot how confident are you that when once this is over uh the election commission will be able to prove that it's impossible to get into the evms or do you believe if the hackers succeed and we've seen hackers get into uh, the most high end machines at nasa the high end machines at apple so hackers have been able to hack into very secure systems do you think once this hackathon is over there will be a big question mark over the validity of electronic voting machines dr kureshi first of all let me clarify that the election commission has not yet made any announcement of, of a hackathon Uh, all the media is saying, but they are likely to, for sure. Uh, that's my uh, the information. And secondly, the the very basic difference between NASA and all of the machines, it should be known to everyone. Our stand, uh, our machines are not network. They do not use internet, and and we don't use internet specifically for this reason. That internet can be hacked. These are standalone machines, like a basic calculator. Can you manipulate your calculator? It has a one-time readable program. Two and two will make four, and that is all it does. Why deliberate choice? Low technology. So therefore, and if anybody is coming forward to the offer uh, to hack, that will be the wonderful because we would like uh, our machine to be totally safe. Okay. And acceptable as safe to everybody. Ashish Kaitan. Ashish Kaitan. Look at what happened in Rajauri Garden in Delhi today. You know, you got hammered. Zamana zapt for up. You were earlier winning over there. Now you're number three, not even number two. The Congress won in Karnataka. The Congress also won in Madhya Pradesh. If these EVMs were hacked, the opposition wouldn't be winning. Now it's become very farcical, Ashish. Where the opposition wins, the EVMs work fine. Where the opposition loses, suddenly there's a problem with the EVMs. Am Amrinder Singh said, "If the EVMs are faulty, what explains me? Is the AAP just acting like bad losers, Ashish?" uh whether you call aap a bad loser or whether you call bjp a bad loser when it was fighting a battle against evm machines and was claiming that they were uh, temperable and they were indeed being tempered and the uh, the propaganda or the campaign was being uh, uh, waged by none other than subramanyam swami and many other senior bjp leaders in the past so i think that's not the question rahul the question is that today on your program you have a software expert there are many other scientists in the country including a scientist abroad in prestigious universities who have publicly claimed that the indian evm machines are vulnerable to tampering 
and they have made these claims uh, in the face of this claim by the election commission that look they are standalone machines and they are, they are not networked. Despite that they have put out solid evidence of EV machines uh, can be tempered. Most important fact is that the onus of proof is on the election commission to show why the EVM machines from Bhind in Madhya Pradesh to Dholpur in Rajasthan were all malfunctioning in a one particular way which was in favor of only one particular party. True which Ashish, is the that's not true. Let me just try and separate facts from if fiction. What happened in Bhind was that that machine was faulty. Was when uh, buttons were being pressed, the other party's party name was popping. It happened for the BJP, it happened for the Congress, it also happened for the RLD, it happened for multiple parties. In Dholpur, you had people come out and say that the machine didn't function. Nobody really has images of somebody pressing BJP and Congress emerging or pre pressing Congress and BJP emerging. That didn't happen. So that's not a fact. Yes, a certain hysteria has been built. Sudanshu Trivedi, does the BJP welcome this hackathon? Rahul. Saying, dood ka dood, pani ka pani, let's find out. Are they acting like bad losers or is there something with the EVMs which we need to rework and strengthen? Rahul, there are two aspects of this situation. One is the technicality, another is the tendency. If you look at the Aam Admi Party, this time they are trying to create a doubt over election commission which is considered one of the most reputed bodies not only in India but also all over the world. Is this not the same party which tried to create doubt over army on the issue of surgical strike? Are they the same party who have created doubt of their own party Lokpal? General Admiral Ramdas, Admin, Admiral Ramdas whom they have thrown apart. They are the same party who has created doubt over their own colleagues. From uh, Prashant Bhushan to Yogen Yadav and the same party who has created doubt over their uh, other figure Anna Hazare. So, Always in the tendency of creating a hype, creating a controversy, and they are not able to understand the reality. In Delhi, there was a single assembly. D do you accept, Ashish Kaitan, that you got hammered in Rajauri Garden? But still a seat that you would won last time when you won 67 seats. Round you bridged. This is not the issue of technicality, it is the issue of tendency. You were, you were the predominant party. After that, do you accept that what happened in Rajauri Garden is something the party needs to introspect? Or do you think that the Garden ki bhi jo EVMs hai, usme bhi kuch tha, uh, Rahul, if you bring down this whole debate over the integrity uh, of EVM machines and the credibility of even EVM machines in the eyes of the common man to one bipole, which is the uh, Rajori bipole, I think then one would be doing great disservice. Uh, to the cause of free and fair elections which form the very core of Indian constitutional democracy. Today this question is not just in the minds of the political parties, it is in the mind of the common man. If you just venture out of your studio, there would be many on the street you will find questioning whether their votes are being registered properly. What is the election commission? Interview of Mr. Qureshi on the internet that the election commission is not doing enough in terms of public perception, in terms of clearing the doubts. It's the job of the election commission, it's their constitutional duty to make every election seem free and fair. Are they doing their job? Even this hackathon story is based on sources. Where is the official press release of the election commission? Where is the official statement of the election commission that they are going to carry on hackathon and what would be the modalities of the hackathon? Is this how the election commission going to function in the country? That they will just float a theory, uh, plant a story without any basis? We don't know whether they actually be a hackathon. I spoke once again. You know, I saw tweets from the Aam Admi Party, I then called up a very senior election whole, commission whole official argument, and, I, and I asked this question that is there actually going to be a hackathon because while you've told our beat correspondents that there will be a hackathon, you haven't put out any statement so far and Kejriwal is asking is this actually going to happen? The election commission said we're figuring out the modalities, how long it will go on for but in the first week of May there will be a hackathon. A senior election commission official told me this himself uh, but they haven't yet put out a statement. And therefore, Ashish Kaitan and the Aam Rahul, Admi Party, I, for everything I, they're I, saying, ki kuch dal mein kala hai. why is there no official statement? Why is this coming out only through media stories and there's no press release? Dr. Kuresh. Rahul, can I come in? Please, because to Dr. say Kuresh. that the election commission has planted a story, Ashish is a very, very wrong and objectionable allegation. The election commission doesn't uh, do these uh, political dirty tricks at all. 
election commission will come out openly and uh, uh, as Rahul is saying, the official has said that they are working out the modalities. When they are ready, they don't plant stories, they don't have to. And uh, But you are right that uh, it is uh, incumbent on the election commission to take uh, the, uh, to uh, get the uh, restore the confidence of the nation in uh, anything which is doubtful in the process and they are working on it. You must remember they were busy in the election till today and in fact uh, even Srinagar uh, uh, counting will be done tomorrow. The, uh, give them a couple of days to finish uh, to come out of the election process. Then they will work on this and uh, as I said that the, my information also is that very soon they are going to announce the schedule, exact modality, then the rules of the game, when they will invite uh, the p potential hackers to come Sudhir and Vedi, One of the things that people asked when the 1st of May a, was announced is the time when this uh, hackathon would happen. People said Kejriwal is asking these questions now. Why is this hackathon not happening before the MCD elections? Why is it happening after? So that's a question that's been asked by many. Dr. Trivedi? Okay, well, I have a question for Arvind Jha because, you know, we were looking at the technology involved in these EVMs. The reason why rigging an EVM is as difficult as it seems is because these EVMs are all standalone machines, they are not connected online. Yeah, well, to fix that. an EVM, you know, each one of those machines need to be tampered with. So even if you can change the code of the EVM, you can change the code of one EVM, you can't change the code of millions of emails and there's so many of them used in every election, so you can't mass rig. So there are real, real problems, Arvind Jha, and the real reasons why EVMs are so tough to tamper with. Not true at all, not true at all. You know, if you remember standalone PCs that we used to have 10 years ago, they had viruses. You know, you got the virus from a floppy. These EVMs have three programmable elements. They have a CPU on the control unit. They have a double EEPROM which stores these votes, which can actually be programmed. You can store a program or a virus in there. They have a real-time clock RTC with a RAM memory. You can put a program in that RAM memory. And remember, the EEPROM and the RTC have the same bus. So it's quite possible that, you know, during maintenance, for example, where the maintenance officials have some kind of tool to program these EEPROMs, some kind of virus is infected in these machines, and that virus takes over the entire operation. So it's quite possible that without having standalone machines, you can have viruses, and those viruses could be programmed to have all kinds of triggers. Sure, Arvind, uh, you know, you know you're making these uh, claims, let uh, this hackathon uh, happen. We will know whether you, what you're saying you can actually do, or is this just bluster? We'll know, and now in that it's sense... Very important. It's very, very, very important. I feel it is very important for the EC to provide the tools to us developers. You know, India has such a large talent of developers and testers and hackers. Let's give them the tools, let's give them the logic analyzers, let's give them the snoop tools, let's give them the, the no, no, bike why should we make your task tools for no, 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 e Why should we RTCs? make your task easy? So I don't agree with that. Use the give them the machine, let's see if they can hack into it. I think that's the challenge and I'm glad because, there are people coming out owners, accepting this remember, challenge. Sorry Rahul. No, we no, don't agree. I, don't agree. No, I don't agree unless, at all. But anyway, I'm out of time. Unless, Arvind Jha, this is very interesting. I promise to have you back. There will be a lot more talk around this hackathon. Right now, I'm totally out of time, so I must end this. Dr. S.Y. Kureshi, uh, Sudan Chutrivedi, Ashish Kaita, and Arvind Jha for joining us. It's good that people like Arvind Jha are taking up this challenge. Dood ka dood paani ka paani hone do. Find out, aap mein dam hai ki nahi. We slip into a break. We'll have more for you when we come back on the other side. Stay with us.